Hi again. Stuff is still going on here. I'll save all that for the end as usual. Since there weren't any questions again, I guess we're all on the same page. No pun intended. So on we go. Entry 7. Dear Shelley, I didn't sleep well last night as the coyotes were scratching at the door. It wasn't my imagination. Along with the dead rabbits, I'll get to that in a minute. There are these gouges on the front door. My mom and dad aren't talking to each other again, but they both said they were sorry for forgetting dinner last night. I asked them about Nat and Kendra sleeping over. I was sure that they were going to say no, especially with what happened yesterday. I didn't take into account that they would jump at a chance to make it up to me. I still can't believe they just ignored me like that. Whenever anything upsetting happened to me, as long as I can remember, they had always comforted me. It's just not like them to be so distant. So they ended up saying yes and then left for work, still not talking to each other. Oh, and the rabbits, which my dad cleaned up again, were in pieces on the porch. It's becoming alarmingly normal. What wasn't normal was the fact that the rabbits' heads were stuck on sticks that were placed in our new flower bed. My dad said he was thinking that the coyotes weren't actually coyotes at all, but stupid kids. On the bus, I told Lewis about the rabbits, leaving out my parents' strange behavior. He agreed it was probably not coyotes with the heads on sticks, and the door thing could have been done by them as well. It creeps me out to think that there are people willing to torture people this way. Lewis said that he'd keep an eye out when he could to see if he could catch the ones doing this. We got off the bus, and some kids were pointing and whispering. I put my head down, and Lewis put his arm around my shoulders and walked with me to our normal meetup place. This sucked just as much, because there was more people than usual hanging around. Nat ran up and hugged me, asking if I was okay, and Kendra patted me on the back. They wanted to know what happened from my point of view since there were only tidbits of gossip and it wasn't put in the papers. Nat told me that the Sierra Times doesn't really print stuff like that, so gossip is the only way to get real news. I told them what happened and I heard people say things like, oh my god, and that's crazy. Then this kid walks up and says that the dude's name was Dave. Apparently, Dave and his friend were obsessed with the 80s killings, and they were into some quote-unquote crazy shit. The bell rang, and people went off to classes talking to each other, saying things like they knew he was nuts, but that was a whole new level. At lunch, I told Nat and Kendra that my parents said yes to them staying the night, and they were all sorts of excited. I have to admit, with what was going on at home, it would be nice to not have to go through it alone, even if it is just for one night. Lewis came up and gave me a quick hug, to which Nat and Kendra gave the typical ooh response to. All of a sudden, a guy came running into the cafeteria shouting, you gotta see those. We all got up and ran to the inner courtyard, where a guy was standing in the middle with a gas can. He was muttering things to himself. Someone said he was Dave's friend, and someone else said that they were running to get the principal. This kid started to laugh and then cry. Sobs echoed through the silent courtyard as he poured gas all over himself. The principal came running up, and we could hear sirens in the distance. The principal tried to talk to him, saying, Son, whatever you're thinking about doing, you need to stop and we can work out whatever's bothering you. The kid looked up and said, I have to do this. He wants, needs me to do this. I, then his face changed into one of complete crazy and he pulled out a lighter. People backed away and then the principal tackled him. The police and paramedics arrived and the principal told us to all go back to lunch. 
As we walked away, I could swear he was staring right at me. On the bus ride home, Lewis tried to brighten my mood by saying, now that these two were locked up, maybe all the animal butchering would stop. We got off the bus and Lewis walked me to the fence. He asked me if I wanted him to walk with me all the way and I was about to say yes when I noticed my dad doing something on the porch. I told Lewis he was nice and that I thought that I could make it on my own. My dad was using a dining room chair to help him put up a motion light and I noticed a camera on the other side of the door. I asked my dad why he was doing this instead of being at work and he told me that he just wanted to catch the little jerks doing this. I told him what happened at school today and he said he had some news too. Dave underwent surgery and they repaired his tongue the best that they could. According to small town gossip, Dave woke up, strapped his bed, and chewed his tongue clean off this time. Unfortunately, he choked on his own blood and died before they could stop him. My dad's boss told him that it was strange since the doctor said that he was right out of surgery and it was near to impossible for him to be awake so quick. I told him the same thing that Lewis had told me, that maybe these two were to blame and maybe now it wouldn't happen anymore. My dad just smiled the way he did when I was little and had said something cute. Then he said, well, this is just an added deterrent then. A little while ago, as we were sitting down to frozen dinners, I asked where mom was and all my dad said was that she was working late. I guess on the bright side, I have my room back. The downside is that I hear the sound of something outside. Melissa. (gasps) What was that? I don't know. It's the other two journals. That's it. Jimmy, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Whoa, what do you mean you're done? We still have two. No, no more, Jimmy. It's weird what's going on. Why don't you see that? Like, why? Don't you just... They just fell off the table, Steph. That can happen. Okay, okay, yeah, but what about those new entries, huh? What? We just we just watched one appear, like, poof. Well, yeah, but maybe if it is Melissa, she just wants her story told. Well, tell it yourself, Jim, because ever since you found those stupid journals, I've been waking up at 2 a.m., and now I'm hearing scratching noises on my bedroom door. I can't keep this up, Jim. I, I have work. Oh, come on, Steph. Maybe someone out there will help us with it. I'm not holding my breath. Hear that, Melissa? I'm done. So stop your crap. Jim, you need to burn those diaries. Okay. Well, that was my girlfriend, Stephanie. Uh, she was helping me out by reading to you. I figured it would be best that a female read another female's thoughts. A lot of stuff has been going on with both of us. Maybe I should burn the diaries. I don't know. Maybe I can talk Stephanie into coming back. In the meantime, um, books are still moving around, obviously. And now I seem to get lights that turn off and on. Uh, The new writing Stephanie mentioned was, I watch you sleep. That's the one that bothered Steph today. So tell me, what do you guys think?